Hey, what's going on developers? Welcome back to the Next.js full course with a real estate project. In the previous video, we have implemented the pagination for our landing page. Now in this video, we are going to create a search bar with search functionality for our application in the landing page. So without further ado, let's get right into it. In the first step, we need to create a search component and then put it inside the landing page. So in the components directory of the app directory, I'm going to create a new component let's call it search.tsx and then inside it let's create a component and here in the JSX let's create an input inside the main div so I just use the input component of the next UI okay that's it enough for now we will get back here in a second and start styling this component but for now let's go to the landing page and put the search component on the top of our page so here before the property container we're going to put the search component here okay so let's save that and also let's save this search component back to the browser you can see we have a input on the top of our landing page so let's get back to the vs code and go to the search component and start styling this component so inside the input we are going to put a magnifying icon so in the end content of the input element we're going to put a magnifying glass icon okay let's put a class name for that w4 for its width let's put a text color text slate 500 i think that's it enough for now for the magnifying glass icon and then let's go to the parent div and put some class name here let's put p4 for its padding flex then item center and justify center for putting the input element on its center okay and then let's put a gradient background for this div bg gradient to br and from sky 400 to indigo 500 okay and then let's put some class name for the input w96 for its width and also let's put some shadow on the input okay now let's get back to the browser now you can see we have the search input with a nice background on our landing page so in the next step we need to put the text inside of the search bar into our ul search brands and then inside the landing page we can read the search query from the url and update the ui according to the search query so now let's go to the search component and put the text inside it on the search params of the url i go back to the vs code and here in the input of this search component we need to set the unchanged event so in order to do that we need to mark this component with a use client okay now we can access to the event handler so here on the input, we're going to set the unchange event to a callback that will call another function handle change and pass the e.target.value. So obviously we haven't created this handle change yet, but here as you can see, we are passing the text inside the input to the handle change function. So here inside our component, we're going to define the handle change function. So I'm going to say const handle change. We're going to set it to a function that takes a parameter query which is a string and here inside it we are going to put the query on the search params of our URL so in order to access to the search params of the URL we are going to use the use search params hook from the next yes so here I'm gonna say const search params and set it to use search params from next navigation so here since this is a client component we are using the use search params so now inside the handle change function we are going to define a params object const params and set it to a new instance of the url search params so this is a helper class that offers some utility functions for manipulating these search params of our url and then in order to initialize that we are going to pass the search params that we have created from the returning object of the use search params okay now here we are going to check the query we're going to say if query is not a empty string then we are going to put the query on the search params so we're going to say params dot set we're going to set the key to just query and pass the query itself as the value otherwise we're going to just delete the query query key from our search prompt so here i'm going to say params that delete and then pass the query key 
So here actually we are saying that if the query is not a empty string, just put the query inside the search params object. Otherwise, which means that the query is a empty string, just delete the query key from the search params object. Okay, so now that we have set the search params, we need to put it inside the URL. So in order to access to the current path, we're going to use another hook, use path name. So here I'm going to say const path name and set it to use path name. This hook actually returns the current URLs of our application without any search params. Okay. And then we need to use the use rather hook to replace the URLs with new search params. So here I'm going to say const router and call the use router hook from next navigation. So it's really important to import the use router from the next slash navigation. Okay. Now here after the if statement in the handle change function, we can replace the URL with the use router hook. So here I'm going to say router dot replace and then put a back text here inside it. First, we're going to put our current URL, which is the path name. Okay. We've got that from the use path name and then put a question mark here, which indicate that the rest of the URL are for the search params. And then after the question mark, we're going to put the params object here, which contains our search params and call to string function. Okay. So in this way, we are essentially replacing our URL with our new search params. Okay. So now let's get back to the browser. Let's put some value inside it. You can see the search params with query key is now changing accordingly to this text inside our search inputs. Now that we have the search params inside the URL, we can go to the landing page and fetch these properties based on the value of our query. So let's get back to the VS code and uh, go to the landing page here, the page directly inside the app directory. And I scroll to the top of the component. You can see we have used the find menu function in order to fetch the properties from our database. So now we need to extract the query from the search params and then put a where API inside our find menu function with the value of our query. So now first let me extract the query from the search params. I'm going to say const query and set it to search params dot query. And if it's not present, which means it's undefined, we're going to just put a empty string inside our query constant here. And then I go to define menu function. And before this keep here, we need to conditionally put the where API here. By conditional, I mean that when the query is not a empty string, we are going to put the where API. Otherwise, where the query string is just a empty string, we don't need to put the where API. So here in order to conditionally add the where API inside the find menu function, we're going to put a parenthesis here. And after the parenthesis, we're going to put a comma for the next parameter, which is skip. Let's get back inside the parenthesis. We're going to check the query first, query, and we're going to turn it to a Boolean with two exclamation mark before it. So if it's a empty string, it will return false. And it's not a empty string, it will return true. And then I'm going to put conditional and operator here. And then after that, we're going to pass an object inside the object. We're going to put our where API. So before doing that, we need to put spread operator here in order to spread the value inside this returning object of this conditional. Okay. Now we can access to the where API and inside the where API, we are going to put the condition on the name. So I just specify the name and inside the name, we're going to use the contains API and then pass query search prop. So since the query can be a string or a list of string, we're going to just convert it to a string in case it's not a string. Okay. Now we can see it's working without any error. So if the query is not a empty string, we are going to create this object, which inside it, we have the where API and then just unpack this object and put the where API directly instead of this expression here. So in this way, we can put some property inside another object in JavaScript conditionally. Okay. So before moving forward, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, 
please subscribe to the channel because it gives me energy to move forward and create such a tutorials for you. Thanks for your support. Okay, now let's get back to our tutorial. In the next step, we need to put this conditionally where API into our count function, which actually count the total number of the properties. We have used this value for finding the number of pages for the pagination functionality. So if you haven't watched the previous episode of this tutorial, which was about the pagination, I highly recommend you to watch it if you want to learn how to implement the pagination landing page. So here inside the count function, we're going to pass a configuration object and inside it, we are conditionally put our where API. So let's save this. And now let's get back to the browser here. If I, for example, put something like Nico, you can see the search params is updated and instantly we are fetching the properties that their name complies with this query search params. Okay. So here, as you can see, we have just one page, but we have the pagination button. So in order to fix that, let's go to the VS code. I go to the property container and inside it in the pagination container, we say that if the total pages equals to one we just return null so if we change this condition to less than or equal that will fix the problem because here in the landing page we are taking the floor of this expression which actually calculate the total number of pages so let's get back to the browser you can see the pagination is gone okay now we have a problem that we need to fix you can see here as soon as i put a character inside this search bar you can see the url is updated and we are going to perform a search query from our database it's not a big deal in small scale application but it's a problem in large scale application imagine that we had hundred thousand records inside our database and searching through this huge amount of records for every character that the user enters inside the search bar is a problem we need to perform a search query from our database when the user stop typing in the input not for every character that he or she enters in our search bars so in order to do that we are going to use the bouncing in our next.js application in order to do that let's get back to the vs code and let's open up the terminal here and we need to install a package called use the bounce so here i'm going to say npm i use dash d bounce okay it is installed let's close off the terminal and let's go to the search component and here in the handle change we need to run this function which updates the search params of the url when the user stop typing so you are going to enforce the debouncing here on this function we're going to wrap this function with a use debounce callback that comes from the use debounce okay just wrap this function inside the use debounce callback so the first parameter of this use the bounce callback is our handle change function and in the second parameter we are going to put some delay time so here we are going to put for example 1000 milliseconds which means that just run this callback function just one second after last time that we called that okay so in other words it actually wait one second before running this callback function now let's get back to the browser now if i start typing here You can see after one second, the search params of the URL is updated. So now let's delete the characters inside the search bar. Just after one second, the URL is updated and we perform the search query of the Prisma from our database only after the user stop typing. And we need to do one last thing in this video. So here, for example, let's put something in our search bar. You can see the URL is updated, but here if I actually change the value of the query inside the URLs and hit the enter here, you can see the search bar is not in sync with our URL. So in order to fix that, let's go back to the VS code here inside the search component in the input, we need to set the default value. So here we're going to set the default value and set it to search params dot get. And then inside the get, we're going to pass the query key. And since it might be undefined, we're going to put double question mark. And in case it is undefined, we just return empty string. If I save that and get back to the browser. Now, if I hit enter here, you can see 
the search bar is now in sync with our query. Another example, let's put some other value manually in our URL for the search query. And you can see now the search bar is filled with the value that we have entered manually in the URL. So yeah, that will brings us to the end of this video and stay tuned for my next video because in the upcoming sections of this tutorial, we are going to implement a payment section and integrate the Stripe API for this real estate application. So hit the bell button in order to get informed by the next video. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.